a new day, a new experiment, and here we are with a Behringer Super X Pro CX uh, 3400 2 on 3 or 4 way crossover. What I want to do today is to have a look inside. But first of all, what is a crossover? We have, let's say, the audio band from 0 Hz to 20K. Let's think about, you know, like, uh, like this portion here from, let's say, 50 Hz to 18. That's how much most of the people will hear. A crossover is just dividing the audio spectrum in slices. It's cutting the audio. So because uh, Behringer is uh, using link widths like this, and that's 24 decibel per octave. It's very sharp and it can divide very nice all the audio spectrum. And what is this machine doing? It's slicing the audio spectrum in four, three, or two bands, depends of your needs. So let's say two-way spectrum, and that means 50 Hertz to around uh, 700, something like here, 700 Hertz. And this will be the first layer. And the other one from 700 to 18, it's going uh, to medium and highs. This is a first situation. Why? Because we need the low frequency going to specialized loudspeakers and medium and medium high frequency going also to specialized loudspeakers. So this is the first situation. Then we can have a three-way crossover. Okay, so let's keep the 700 here and we have another, another divide around uh, 2 kilohertz for the mediums here. And the other side from 2 kilohertz to 18 for tweeters or high frequencies uh, loudspeaker. That's the second situation. We have one, two, three ways. And of course, four ways. This is very simple to understand. We have a uh, four way. We'll keep the low frequencies in the same range. This one goes 2 kilohertz and the other one goes, let's say, 3.5 kilo to another specialized horns or tweeters and things like this. So the audio spectrum is divided in four pieces, in four slices. And why we need that? It's very simple to understand. Let's take the simple configuration. So we have a power amplifier going to big loudspeakers. So these are the subs, subwoofers. This is a stereo variant, of course. And we have another power amplifier going to medium and high frequency speaker, medium and high frequency speaker, like this. So this is bus or lows, and this is medium plus highs. You see, these loudspeakers for medium and highs, they have a problem with the low frequencies. I mean, they can't really reproduce those. So that's why they need a part of the spectrum, this one here. And of course, the subwoofers or woofers, they are specialized in low frequencies, and that means they need to be run in this area. How can we do that? Oh, very simple. We have this crossover. So in between the things, we have, let's say, the mixer with all the volumes and stuffs, and then we have the crossover here. The connection from the mixer goes to crossover in left, right, of course. And from here, in our case, just divided in two. From here, we're gonna have for the low frequencies, channel A, channel B, of course. And for, for the high frequencies, we have from the crossover going to the other amplifier. Very simple, A, and B. And that's why the subwoofers, you know, these loudspeakers, they will do something like this. Have this frequency around maybe 180, 250 Hertz specialized. The rest, the rest of the spectrum is just disappearing for them. It's nothing here, nothing. So it's working only in this area. So it's a perfect fit for the way the subwoofers are working and needs of a subwoofer. And of course, you don't need filters, you know, passive filters anymore. You can connect the subwoofers directly to the power amplifier. And this one up here, they will go like this. Let's say 250 Hertz and up to 20K. So this will be the area 
and of course nothing under 250 nada that's how a crossover it's working this machine also have a lot of other very useful things uh, like cd horn what that means it's boosting the frequencies around 3.5 kilohertz and that uh, it's make this frequency more linear so we have a better hearing a better understanding of these frequencies and of course there are limiters and we have phase inverters uh, and what else very interesting and very useful it's the low frequencies delay so you can have around two milliseconds of low frequency delay why let's say you have a pa system and uh, you have the low frequencies loudspeakers you know the subwoofers and so on behind you at the bottom of the stage you know behind behind the band or something then you can have a delay for this that keeps the low frequency is coming from the loudspeakers a little bit later than the high frequencies in the front of the audience and uh, somehow it's making the sound coming into a sandwich way <laughs> if i can say that what else uh, useful here we also have a multiband limiter this one you can fix it to a certain value and that keeps the pa and the loudspeakers to not be overdrive somehow you have an amplifier of two times 500 watts output power but your loudspeakers are only 350 then you can adjust the limiter exactly at the need of the loudspeaker so there is no accidental peaks or anything else to ruin your loudspeakers okay so that's the idea of the things of course there are a lot of other uh, interesting uh, functions here one of them it's mono or sound low frequencies because under a certain frequency let's say 100 hertz doesn't really matter the stereo speciality of the sound source you don't even need that from my experience i can tell you that sometimes when you have even a mono mix it sounds much better on the stage than a stereo or something so this one when it's pushed this one brings the low a and low b both channels in a mono signal and that helps for uh, how can i say for having round and uh, very nice low frequencies pack that's that's a very useful uh, function okay i don't want to talk about uh, you know all this volume stuffs and all the filtering and so on all i want to do now is to open it up and have a look inside okay power off the cable is out let me have a screwdriver and let's take a look let's have a look what's inside there we have our screws behind here and there we go huh let's have the look inside hola we have a really nice transformer here toroidal transformer those two over there they sh that should be the um, voltage supply and i'm pretty sure there are 78 12 and 79 12 12 volts differential let me see 79 5 15 oh okay so there are on 50 volts 79 15 and 78 15 we have a few operationals here that's for input and outputs and that's like uh, 4580 yeah that's the operational classic operational so those are the inputs and the outputs and the same story here 4580 16 4580 and we also have here grc 2060 or something I suppose these are all the operational circuits we need for, for having all the filtering running. Okay, so that's it for today. If you have a small PS system, if you have a DJ uh, sound system, uh, anyway, a crossover, it's a need. Then you can adjust your amplifiers and loudspeakers and everything uh, in the chain to the right frequency 
and of course the right efficiency in the same time you don't overcharge loudspeakers they are working exactly in the in the parameters i may say and uh, it's really really good to use a crossover two ways minimum but it can be four ways it can be three ways doesn't matter but at least two ways to separate the low frequencies mediums and medium high frequencies okay thank you for now see you soon with some other projects if you have any comments don't hesitate to ask and write them down please like and subscribe see you soon and don't forget to have fun bye bye oh.